this uh, third lecture sessions on uh, purchasing management, uh, we are uh, going to discuss uh, three or four important issues, namely uh, the basic purchasing process. Uh, we have already mentioned uh, the importance of purchasing management uh, in a particular company or for any organization. Now, as uh, a learner, as well as as an uh, executive of an organization, you need to know uh, the what are the purchasing operations uh, you need to uh, the carry out, uh, and this is uh, this the, all these operations uh, you will come to know only when uh, you are aware of the basic purchasing process. And uh, when we refer to purchasing process, we bring in the concept of the purchasing cycle and, uh, and what are the operations involved in this cycle. Then there could be different types of uh, purchase. So, we will refer to uh, the two specific aspects. One is uh, the buying agreements and uh, the concept of system subcontracting. And uh, uh, before uh, we discuss uh, the, the details of make or buy decisions. So, during these lecture sessions, we also intend to uh, introduce the concept of make or buy decisions. Okay. Now, uh, the let us uh, the talk about the basic purchasing process. Now, the procurement cycle for an item to be purchased, that is the basic purpose of purchasing has several distinct phases. So, you need to identify all these phases and more or less uh, whatever may be the item to be procured or, or whatever uh, um, may be the type of organization more or less uh, these phases are very very common. So, what are these phases? There are five important phases you come across. In the first phase, you consider the request for materials, supplies and equipment from the using departments. So, essentially these purchase items are to be used by the using departments. So, uh, based on the request you get from the using departments, any one of the using departments, so you initiate the purchasing the process. So, that is uh, uh, the phase 1 that means you need to analyze the requests and you have to take certain actions. So, we will discuss in detail all the activities involved in phase 1. Then we move to phase 2 that means here what you need to do you need to select the suppliers and uh, once you select a supplier or a group of suppliers for uh, the given item, then you need to issue the purchase orders. So, the next phase that means phase 2 concerns with the selection of the suppliers and issuance of purchase orders. Then once uh, the purchase orders are issued, then you move to phase 3 that means uh, uh, the follow up of the outstanding orders what is known as the expediting. So, what are the different kinds of expediting norms or expediting procedures you need to follow under different conditions. So, you must have a thorough idea about all this. Then uh, once the follow, follow up is over, then what is expected that is you receive, you receive the orders and, uh, and once you receive the orders then you go for inspection of the materials of the items uh, items at uh, your workplace. So, there is received an inspection of the materials from the suppliers. So, that is essentially the four phase 4 activities and then at the last phase or the phase 5 activities you verify the supplier invoices and uh, you instruct your finance departments or account departments to make for the payment. 
So essentially making payment is not the responsibility of, uh, uh, of the purchase departments, but based on the purchase departments, uh, you know, the recommendations, the finance department is responsible for making the payment. So all these, uh, uh, the phases we'll discuss in detail. Now these phases are interrelated and many a time are included in one cycle called purchasing cycle. So as, uh, as uh, you know, as an executive or as a manager or as a purchasing, uh, say the officer, so you should be aware of uh, the phases in this purchasing cycle. Now a purchasing department may deal with hundreds of sources, sources means the suppliers for thousands of items like for an automobile company it may be dealing with say uh, say maybe few thousands uh, the components and uh, similarly say aircraft manufacturing company may be dealing with thousands of parts, components and materials and it is a very common occurrence and obviously the purchase department has a complex administrative job because you need to interact with uh, the many types of suppliers and uh, what is expected that as you uh, as you uh, you know the increase more number of parts in your uh, say the product mix or with the changing or the increasing you know uh, uh, the product uh, portfolio uh, what is expected is that uh, the, the source uh, you know uh, or say uh, uh, entire uh, say whatever uh, say the number of sources or the number of suppliers you have so this number uh, uh, goes on increasing over time and uh, so it is uh, a complex administrative job uh, over and above its responsibility for skillful buying. So just uh, you uh, you be aware of uh, the level of complexities involved and uh, you should be also aware of that what are the different kinds of situations you come across while you deal with uh, or while you negotiate with the, the suppliers. Many companies have now computerized their purchasing operations. This is uh, also a very common occurrence for certain items even computer to computer purchasing procedures can be adopted for standard items why, why you, while you uh, you know the opt for a standard procedures and more or less uh, the supplier base uh, remains constant. So you may opt for computer to computer purchasing there are many instances however for purchase of new products and systems like say system subcontracting a large number of operations in purchasing cycle are to be carried out manually. This is unavoidable. With direct managerial interventions at different control points, later on when you discuss the purchasing cycle, now the purchasing cycle may be represented uh, with respect to a number of control points. And uh, at these control points, appropriate decisions are made. So these are the basic uh, the points you must uh, keep in mind while uh, you discuss or while you refer to uh, the several elements of the purchasing cycle. Now what are the important issues or the aspects to be considered? So all these uh, important aspects phase wise you must be able to identify and you must be able to consider them. So during phase one, what are the important issues and aspects? So let me elaborate. Like a using department indicates its needs for materials on a requisition. So this is referred to as a requisition. If the materials are available in stores, stores requisition is sent by the using department and materials are supplied from the stores. That means as soon as you send a store requisition, uh, it is assumed that it is known that uh, the stock for that particular item is available in the stores. And as soon as uh, the stores department receives uh, the store requisitions, uh, the item will be supplied in the required quantity. A purchase requisition used 
for materials that have to be ordered from suppliers. That means you send the you uh, you get the information of the stores that the given that the required item uh, is not available. So what do you need to do now? You need to send a purchase requisition to the purchase department. Okay, and uh, then it is the responsibility of the purchase uh, departments to uh, take effective steps for uh, uh, for making the purchase orders and sending the purchase orders uh, to uh, the a particular supplier or group of suppliers depending on uh, the type of uh, the item to be procured and uh, and the quantity of the item uh, required in the purchase requisition form the material name or code specifications amount needed and desired delivery date are mentioned okay so this is a purchase requisition form so the different but more or less these informations are common a company may have its own uh, uh, say uh, say the purchase requisition form for items of a repetitive nature the regularly used and for those for which purchases are normally made to replenish stocks is it okay replenishment uh, when you get uh, you send an order for replenishment a traveling requisition may be used so that means for uh, the items of uh, the repetitive nature regularly used at a particular uh, the frequency so use a special kind of uh, say requisition form and uh, this is referred to as the traveling requisition form in many computerized operations computer generated schedules are mailed to the supplier without a purchase requisition being generated so this uh, process is also being followed in these cases purchasing has already negotiated price and terms usually for one year uh, say the period that means the price is already known and uh, what is not known that means a given time period what is your requirement so so price is negotiated price is settled and then what you do you send uh, a detail uh, the schedule uh, to the supplier and in the detailed schedule so the month wise your requirements are specified so and uh, there will be you know the variations in uh, the month wise requirements so as per uh, uh, say the month wise requirements uh, the supplier is supposed to supply the items sometimes purchasing is based directly on a bill of materials we have already uh, we we already know what is a bill of material that means to produce or uh, to manufacture one unit of output or one unit of the end product how many different types of say different types of items component parts and materials you require so this uh, the document you prepare and this is basically the main output of the design department uh, so this is referred to as the bill of materials so uh, uh, so when uh, we we discussed uh, say the mrp systems uh, so we referred to uh, the concept of bill of materials so that lists every item in a company's end product so what do you what do you do that means in a given bill of materials uh, you know that what are the items to be procured okay from uh, the outside source so uh, so for a specific uh, set of items given in the bill of material and with the required quantities for uh, for, for the required months or the time periods you just send this bill of materials to the supplier and the supplier as per the uh, the requirements specified in the bill of materials okay uh, they start supplying these items as per uh, say i uh, you know the delivery due dates a more automated and sophisticated buying uh, from a bill of materials is done in material requirements planning systems already we have discussed uh, the mrp systems so uh, so uh, the purchase department plays a very important role while uh, you uh, uh, while you install an mrp system and you start working uh, uh, 
uh, with an MRP system senior organization. In phase 2, during uh, what do you do? That is various processes of negotiation and decisions that take place between the time at which a purchase is authorized and the time at which the order is issued are considered. That means now uh, uh, the requests are, are made to the purchase department. Now as per the requests uh, made, the purchase department uh, is to, uh, is to uh, prepare a purchase order. Now there is invitation to supplier to bid. So, this is referred to as the bidding process. Please uh, note this point. Uh, it is a frequently used term, the bidding process in purchase department. So, so the supplier, the possible uh, the sources of supply uh, will be invited to bid for the order. An evaluation of bids received, that means uh, it is most likely they will be getting uh, the bids from not only one supplier, but the several suppliers. So, ultimately you have to select just one supplier. So, evaluation of the bids is a must. The form issued to participate in this bidding process is called a request for quotation. Now, this procedure is employed under the following situations. That means, uh, there could be a question sir, why do you go for bidding process? So, the bidding process uh, in many a time it is considered a proof system, full proof system. Now, a full proof system when purchase involves substantially high expenditure. Okay. Price information as available is not sufficient. So, you need to explore the market intensely. The product is a new one or complex in design, in manufacture and expensive with no experience of its purchase in the past. That means, the first time you come across such a product or such an item or such a material to be procured from outside source. Intense or steep competition among suppliers of the product or the material. That means, it is already known that for the given material or the item, there uh, may be a lot many suppliers. So, there is intense competition among the suppliers of the product or the material. Now, so obviously, let uh, everyone or let a specified number of uh, you know the suppliers, uh, the bid for that particular order and then uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll assess uh, each and every bid and uh, scientifically objectively before we select one supplier or a group of suppliers. A major contract is up for renewal, okay. a major that means it is, it is an important contract as far as uh, the operations of uh, the plant is concerned or as far as uh, you know uh, the company's uh, the performance is concerned and it is desired to research the competitive prices and services in the market. So, under these conditions you go for uh, uh, the bidding process. There, there may be a two bid system. This is very, very common these days. So, uh, this, uh, so, these two bids are known as the technical bid and followed by the financial bid. So, first what you need to do that means, uh, you invite uh, uh, the quotations and uh, from the prospective with the suppliers, group of suppliers and you ask them to go for uh, the technical bid as well as the financial bid. Usually, the supplier quoting minimum price after successfully complying with the technical requirements. That means, first you check that to what extent uh, say each bidder is able to uh, the fulfill uh, the technical requirements uh, as uh, uh, order as per the, for, for the given order. And uh, once uh, uh, say uh, uh, the, the, the bidder uh, passes uh, this test that means, uh, it passes through the technical bid then only uh, the financial bid will be checked or the verified. 
the purchase order is the instrument okay in which goods are procured to fill a requirement so this is uh, this is known so this way we define a purchase order it express in specific language the agreement between the buyer and the supplier so this is basically uh, the reflects or represents uh, an agreement once accepted it has the legal force of a binding contract so i repeat once accepted it has the legal force of a binding contract so this is a very very important document purchase order now after uh, the purchase order uh, is sent uh, uh, to uh, the supplier okay uh, selection of the supplier is very very important so we'll refer to uh, these aspects later on and uh, you will come to know that uh, what is the procedure you should employ uh, for uh, the selection of the supplier and uh, what are the critical issues to be considered so so that the selection process uh, becomes appropriate so after uh, the purchase order is issued to the supplier now the follow up action is a must so what is a follow up and that comes uh, under phase 3 so the follow up is an essential activity in majority of the cases there could be you know uh, the few cases where follow up may not be needed that means uh, uh, the understanding between the buyer and the supplier is uh, so strong and suppose uh, and uh, the supplier is highly reliable okay so the best possible supplier only on those uh, exceptional cases uh, you may avoid uh say the follow up actions but otherwise in general uh, the follow up action uh, is an essential step or an essential activity there can be two types of follow up routine follow up and second one is referred to as the field expediting for the important orders okay and uh, uh, many a time you go for sole sourcing okay and uh, uh what happens that uh, it is very very important order and uh, so uh, so you don't need to take any risk of uh, non supply uh at specified time so you go for the field expediting so, so let me first uh, discuss the routine follow up now the mechanism for routine follow up is very simple so essentially you create a file of open orders uh you if you visit any purchase department uh, definitely uh, this is a very common occurrence so it is nothing but uh, a file of open orders arranged in numerical sequence computer is systems provide soon to be due so you define soon to be due that means within uh, say the next one week and overdue items that means already you know the delivery time uh has passed and uh, due to some reasons okay uh, the supplier uh, is unable to supply the item on time so you need to identify those suppliers and you have to take some uh, actions that the actions could be of different types so these are referred to as overdue items so at any point in time you must know when you go for uh, the routine follow up so the how many uh, how many items are uh, soon to be due type and how many items are overdue types overdue items type so as the need for expediting becomes more acute that means there could be some critical items which are in the overdue category so uh, this is so so obviously you know uh, uh, the whole situation uh, may become very very acute a critical situation you might face the tone and method of follow up becomes stronger and more personalized is it okay so this is very very important and uh, uh, one of the key features or the key factors with you judge uh, the performance of a supplier is uh, that means there could be some genuine reasons uh, on uh, genuine reasons uh, because of which uh, certain items may become overdue type overdue category but uh, how do you uh, respond to these situations that means how the suppliers are are uh, are genuinely concerned 
about these items. So, you as a buyer uh, must have uh, uh, must have a clear idea as well as uh, a clear procedures you need to follow, so that uh, uh, such uh, such conditions do not repeat in future. So, some uh, actions are required uh, on your part as a buyer, so that in future uh, such occurrences uh, uh, do not uh, repeat. For field expediting, this is an important activity in any purchase department. A staff of expeditors in the field is maintained, that means in a specific area. Such expeditors are usually made responsible for all orders placed with suppliers in a given territory. Sometimes this function is combined with inspection of materials at the supplier's plant, right. So, uh, so this is called the, the field expediting, particularly for the important orders or when you go for uh, system subcontracting. When purchasing involves long lead time and complex requirements for say heavy construction, professional expediter may be employed for follow up of orders. Is it ok? So, this point is to be noted as a part of follow up or in general condition or the normal as a situation, it may be necessary to make changes in quantity, scheduling or specification. So, this concept is essentially known as the change order and uh, if there is a change order situations, so but to what extent uh, it uh, may affect uh, your follow up actions or the field expediting. So, that point also should be uh, taken care of. So, many a time you need to make corrections with changes in design and business, the corrections in the purchase order. Is it ok? And what is its implications on the follow up you should be aware of. During phase 4, the receiving section may be a part of stores department not necessarily a part, part of purchasing department. So, that means, in the during phase 4 what do you what do you do actually? You start receiving the items. So, what you will find in majority of the cases that the stores department has a, a receiving section. So, the purchase department has a close uh, interaction with the stores department particularly the receiving section of the stores. So, the receiving section acknowledge is the receipt of the items in specified quantity. The condition of goods damaged or not is stated. Okay. So, this is uh, that means uh, the receiving section means you receive the items in quantities. Not uh, while you receive certain items uh, in the stores department, it does not necessarily mean that, uh, that the, uh, the, the items or uh, say the particular lot is accepted. So, inspection or the quality department, quality control department is responsible for accepting the order. So, there is a difference between uh, the receiving and accepting. So, inspection department is responsible for accepting the order for which examination, test or inspection method is used. Out of the total number of units received, proportion of accepted number of units is decided by inspection of the quality control systems. That means, out of say 1000 units uh, received, how many are accepted? So, this is uh, say 990 are accepted or 900 are accepted. Uh, this is uh, basically the responsibility of the quality control or inspection department. So, uh, either uh, this inspection department or quality control department uh, may be stationed uh, at uh, the receiving section of the stores or uh, they may be stationed at uh, the using department. In phase 5, the invoice is received and based on the actual number of accepted units as reported by the inspection or the quality control department, the payment is made to the supplier. Is it ok? So, this is basically it, it deals with the payment. Against an order, there is a credit period as I already pointed out that uh, when you talk about industrial purchasing, 
uh, we it is essentially a credit purchase and uh, so in uh, the terms and and the conditions terms and agreement as you uh, reach as a buyer you reach uh, with uh, with the supplier now this credit period uh, is mentioned so in certain cases it could be 30 days in many cases it could be 45 days so it's a part of the agreement so it is desired that the payment to the supplier is made within the credit period as stated in the purchase order document okay so this is an important issue and uh, your purchase system should be such that uh, uh, that uh, you are able to you know uh, make the payment within the credit period so that uh, it will have a direct impact on the relationship between the buyer and the supplier and uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the implementing the sole sourcing concept that means uh, uh, we say that there must be a long standing relationship between the buyer and the supplier and if you uh, uh, if you maintain this uh, the long standing uh, say the reliable relationship with your supplier uh, it may so happen that uh, many a time suppose uh, for a particular reason you are unable to uh, uh, say the make the payment within uh, the credit period uh, specified uh, so the supplier uh, uh, may accept extending uh, uh, your request or extending the credit period so we need to study the existing purchasing procedure to find out the problems with the existing system so uh, you know the, the no purchasing system uh, can be 100% perfect so always there is a scope for improving the purchasing uh, the process so what is important is that you need to assess as a system analyst you must be able to assess uh, uh, the existing uh, the purchasing procedures or the purchasing process so obviously when you start assessing the existing process the problems with the existing system you must be aware of now these problems may be manifold there are many types of problems you might face many high cost low value transactions so this point is to be noted how many transactions are of this type duplication of effort unnecessary and time consuming paper work so that's why many a time uh, you to try to opt for a feasible alternative in the form of a computerized system and uh, the paperless uh, the system sometimes we mention the loss lost shipments this is an important problem is a very critical problem no volume buying benefits so you stick to the the rule but uh, you may must be able to uh, create a system which is flexible and no professional approach to simplify and improve purchasing procedure a condition of minimum number of control points is to be ensured a typical improved purchasing procedure with minimum number of control points now i will present to you now this is this way you create that means uh, uh, what is a control point control point means uh, that uh, uh, a, a point or a situation uh, where uh, the manual intervention is required that means certain decisions you have to take and uh, this is a subjective decision so intervention is required so when you study when you assess uh, a particular say the purchasing uh, the process now this purchasing process must be represented with number of control points like for example when you study a particular purchasing uh, process you may come across uh, some 15 or 16 control points so immediately you may conclude that as the number of control points is more that means uh, your uh, uh, purchase system is uh, very very complex so uh, you try to uh, improve the purchase uh, procedures or the purchasing uh, uh, say the process and uh, with improvement uh, you might get uh, such a process or such a procedure so here uh, you just uh, study this uh, this particular purchasing process where you 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 have just eight 
points of control. So, this is the first point of control we have identified all these points of control. Second, this is the second point of control that means the value analysis part. This is the, uh, the shopping procedures that is the third point of control. At the fourth point of control, you have uh, you know how many uh, you know uh, uh, the copies of purchase orders you will be sending uh, to uh, the different uh, uh, say the departments or the sections. Then at the uh, you know the fifth point of control you have uh, so this here is another uh, the fifth point control at the uh, when you review uh, as a purchasing officer the all the all the copies of the purchase orders. And then here uh, you have the six point control. This is uh, the second seventh point of control. That means is the control imposed by the accounts departments. Uh, okay, which part is payable, and which part is not. And at the eight points of control, the treasurer's review. Okay, so this way you can represent the entire purchasing process. So there may be different kinds of purchasing procedures depending on the types of organizations types of products and services, types of equipment and processes, if importing is required or needed import like uh, purchase of capital goods uh, many a time for many Indian organizations for purchase of capital goods uh, you need to go for importing. So, uh, the import uh, the process uh, you must know and the import and import related terms and terminologies like uh, uh, the CIF the bill of lading etcetera you should be aware of. Purchase in international markets, purchase of transportation services, government purchasing, institutional purchasing etcetera. So, there may be blanket order for the amount of items or open end order or yearly order system of purchase. A more advanced form of purchasing is known as system subcontracting where as an example, the entire work unit or a plant is to be subcontracted as an order to a specific supplier company or an individual supplier to construct the plant at the buyer's work unit. As per the specifications with raw materials and other resources provided by the buyer or the buyer company. So, this is also a type of purchase, but this is a special type of purchase known as systems contracting or systems subcontracting. So, these so now uh, the before you go for purchase now the make or buy decision uh, is a must. That means, uh, when you go for uh, uh, say the purchase of an item that means, that item is included in the bill of materials and you have decided to uh, uh, so the buy this item you are not making it with your own uh, facilities with own, own manufacturing systems. So, uh, so this is very important decisions and, uh, and uh, uh, we will we'll explain this make or buy decisions in, uh, in, uh, in, in detail in our lecture next lecture sessions. So, I hope that uh, we, we are able to identify you know by the several important issues related to purchasing process. The one thing you uh, you should be aware of that means, all the significant operations while uh, uh, while you go for uh, purchasing uh, you should be aware of and uh, you should be aware of what are the critical factors determining the efficiency and effectiveness of a purchasing cycle. Okay, so, uh, so, I conclude this session and uh, in the next uh, lecture sessions uh, during this week I will uh, I will go for discussing in detail the uh, the concept of make or buy decisions thank you